Hey there everyone, it's Aish here, back again with another video and welcome to the React Native series. So, in this video, the goal is really simple. I have no idea, zero idea, how I can create three elements on my screen. The goal is really simple, I want to create three elements or three boxes on the screen. They should be all on to left to right, so it's not like I want to make them top to bottom, I want to make them left and right and that is my goal. And I don't have much idea of how to do that. So we'll do some experimentation and through this experimentation, we are going to learn that. I have a decent knowledge on the web so that how can I do it? I have a decent knowledge on the flex as well. So let's see how we can actually figure it out on the go. And that would be our uh, journey of how to get started with that. Now, first and foremost, the thing is that everything is wrapped inside a view. That is a good thing because in the web also, we wrap everything into the divs and then further keep on wrapping them. So that is good. Now here we have a text which says simply a uh, flat card, so I'll just space it out. Right now this flat card is not looking nice, even not even the little bit nice that we have. So I want to provide some styling on that and I know that I can go ahead and provide the styling like that. So I can just simply say style and then I can go ahead and mark any styles. For example, I can go ahead and say styles dot and let's just call this one as heading text, heading text. Now, right now, this is giving me problem because earlier I studied that this styles is actually querying an object which is in the style sheet. So this is the styles where it is trying to look forward for it. Now, this is a JSON object and inside this, you can create as many properties as you like. One property that we should be creating is this heading text. So go ahead and create that. Let's go up here and say that I will give you a property of the heading text. But what should be inside this heading text? That is, you go ahead and create another object. So it's a nested object that we have. Now inside this, this is not going to make any sense right now because you are not providing any properties. You should be providing some properties. A uh, couple of properties, like for example, there is a font size. The good thing is that the VS Code suggests us everything. Now, you might have already figured out the, the familiarity and the differences between the web and the React Native world. In the web, we have font dash sizes, but here we have just font size. This is how it looks and this is how it always looks. It is consistent throughout this one. So I can go ahead and say I want to use a 24 points here. So I'll just save this one and notice here the cards get a little bit bigger. So you see, this is just like how you play around on the web. Similarly, you play around with here. Now, similarly, you can have a font weight and I need to put up a comma and we have a font weight. Let's go ahead and put a property up here. So this one is going to be, let's just say bold. And uh, yep, font card is a little bit bold. Now, obviously, this is too much onto the left side and too much on the top as well. What can I do to make it a little bit move on the right? Of course, I, I can use margin or I can use padding. Both of them are like there is no incorrect at this point of time. So I'm going to go ahead and use padding. And notice here pad padding is available to me for the bottom, for the end or for horizontal, similarly for vertical as well. Let's provide a padding of horizontal in this case. And I'll just use an arbitrary number here, probably eight. Let's try this out. Looks great, but I can also go ahead and try 10. Yeah. So whatever makes sense is just all about eyeballing the stuff. Eventually you will learn that how can make it a little bit much more better on all the devices. But yeah, this is all hit and run as of now. All right, so this looks good. So one point or one part is done. Now let's go ahead and try to have. So we saw earlier in the project demonstration, so we have this line, this good styling could be reused multiple times. Now after that, we have three cards or three, uh, you can say squares or boxes around here. Now these are three, so obviously I, I would like to further wrap them up inside a view because it will make my targeting much more easier. Let's go ahead and wrap them up with the view, just like this. And inside this view, we will further have another view because that's where we'll be having this one. Uh, you get the idea how this is being done. So we have this view, further down we have a text. And in the text, we are going to go ahead and say red. We're not going to get all the text and all the boxes at once. We want to first try out the styling on just the red, then eventually I'll introduce this. What I'll be doing in, the, in that is just copying and pasting this one. So this portion will be copied just like this and uh, we'll be calling this one as green, so something like that. So this will happen, but not right now. We want to focus on a little bit different. So obviously we have this view further and we will use this as a kind of a container just like we do in the web. So you guessed it right. I'll have some styling onto this one.
I'm still having itchy throat. <laughs> okay, so we have a styling and this is just a container. So all I'm going to do is I'll say styles and you can feel free to name it anything. I'll just obviously say it as container. This will create a problem because container doesn't exist, but that's okay. Now further down this, we obviously want to style this and this is just almost like putting up classes and all of that. Now in this case, this element is going to have a couple of generic properties because the, the other cards like red, green, and blue, they will have the same properties like this, but we can have some of the properties with the particular card uh, by let's just say changing the colors and everything. So individual properties are going to be there and the common properties are going to there. So we need more than one styling. More than one styling can be achieved by an array. So you can give a list of all the properties of styles that you can give. So simply let's go ahead and say styles dot card which will be generic one and we'll be having a styles dot and let me just move this here and we'll be having styles dot card one let's call this one as card one obviously none of them exist so we'll just go up here and first we'll create them so first of all let's here container let's keep this as an empty one then we have card let's also keep this as empty and we'll have card one so that at least it stops yelling. So there we go. Okay, fixed as of now, this is good. Now let's go ahead and try to give this card some of the styling properties. We'll go back and come on to this container in a minute, but first let's give the card basic some properties. Uh, by basic, I really mean to have some height and width so that we can at least see the card is there. So we're gonna have a width of 100 and we'll be having a height of 100 as well. So there we go. So now that at least we can see that the card is available. Now, right now this card has uh, no color or anything like that. So this I would love to give in the card one so that later on I can change the background color. And this is the background color that I have a background color in my notes so that I can show it to you. This is just a decent card. So there we go. All right. So I have a card and I can notice that obviously the default property of where the card exists is the top left, wherever the element starts. And I can obviously manipulate and how things goes on. For example, individual properties can be manipulated. For example, if I go ahead and say uh, border radius, border radius, there we go. Let's just say I want to have a border radius of four. Obviously the card gets a nice cornered radius. So I'm achieving my look, what I really want, but it is still not... I'm not satisfied where it should be going. For example, I can go ahead and put some margin on to this one. Uh, you can set margins on a particular direction or you can just say, hey, I want a margin from all the direction of let's just say eight. It moves the card a little bit there. All right, so this is good. This is basics, but there are a couple of things which are bothering me. First and foremost, how can I make this text which is inside it all to the center? Now, there are a lot of ways how you can do it. Uh, of course, don't try it with the margins and the padding. That is a bad idea. The first one being you can try the property of flex. So once I give it a property or a, a value of flex as one, right now notice there's nothing that happens because once you define flex, it does basically nothing. Flex actually allows you to have further two of the properties, justify content and align items. This actually moves whatever is inside that box. So for example, if I go ahead and say justify content, and there are a lot of properties. We studied that in the project one, that how you can read the documentation and find out these properties. We're going to go ahead and say center. And of course, I need to put up a comma. Otherwise, it will yell at me. Notice here, since the main axis in the, in the flex is uh, from top to bottom, that's why the justify content always aligns your items into uh, from top to bottom. That's great. So what we have deduced is flex doesn't do anything. It moves things which are inside the container of it. Similarly, you know how you, how you can center the element now. It, it's obvious now. We have another one property, which is align content. Not align content, actually. Align uh, items. There we go. And I can go ahead and say center. Come on. Align items. There we go. Just a couple of typos. Don't worry. There we go. All right. So we have learned so far that how easy it is to manipulate things and move things into center. There are more properties. I highly, highly recommend you to watch that video or go on to directly to the documentation of React Native to figure out there are not more than four or five properties of Justify Content. Play around with them. This is how you are going to learn. This is the experimentation that you should be doing.
All right, this is good. I'm happy with what is happening as of now. But now, uh, just like I have card one, I have actually card two and card three as well. Obviously, you saw that already coming up. So I need to actually uh, copy this and I'll be saying this one is going to be card uh, two and we should have a comma and we'll be having a card three and this should also have a comma. Now I have three colors. Feel free to pick up your color. Although I have a website UI color picker, feel free to pick up some great colors from there. We obviously have a great color set there. Not too much, but we have this. All right. So now we have uh, colors. By the way, you can also hover onto this and find out these colors. Feel free to use any color, whatever you like. That's not the goal. Okay, now so far we haven't touched onto this container. This container also is going to teach you a lot of things. Let me go ahead and move on. Now that we understand how we can have one of this card, we can actually see that how or what happens when I have more than this card. So for example, let's just go ahead and now I know this container, I can have more of this. Let's go ahead and have two copies of it. All right, let me move you a little bit here. And this one was red. Let's just say this one is blue or feel free to name it whatever you like. And obviously we'll change the card with the two. Obviously this two is doing nothing, just providing a background color. You have already figured it out by now. Should be easy. Three. All right. And let's call this one as red, blue and green. All right. All RGBs. All right, so this is the default look that we have. You'll always get this default look because even though I have not applied any property of flex on the container, I told you there is something that is default that is working out. So my red, blue and green are behaving as the default is asking them to behave. So it says red, blue and green. All right, nice. But now that I have a knowledge of Flexbox, I can manipulate them. I can change the direction of the flex intentionally if I want to. And that is why I have wrapped them up, all of them, inside this container. Let's go ahead and try to do that. So inside this container, all I have to do is first, you guessed it right, flex. So let's go ahead and say this is a flex and one. Is this going to do anything? Obviously not. So if I save this, that's nothing. It shouldn't be doing anything at all. Now, the major thing which is going to change everything is a flex direction. So flex direction, you know the default, which is from top to bottom. So I have to change it from column to row. By the way, just to show you, I have this column behaving as a default, as you expected. And I can go ahead and say it as row. And I save this. And now I know how to achieve a look which moves element from left to right. There we go. Okay, all right, just a quick uh, more updates. There are a couple of more suggestions actually you can work on. For example, there's a column reverse. You can change the order of it, play around with that. More properties you'll know, more enjoy, more fun you'll have. Uh, you can also try a column reverse, a column reverse, there we go. And you can just reverse it in the columns. Doesn't make any sense. Uh, but yeah, you get the idea. I just want row in this case. All right, so this is good. And this is looking fantastic, but there's one more thing you can do. And this is just aesthetic, nothing much more to do. Uh, I want that this container is, although very neatly packed, but I want a little bit more should be shrink. Maybe some devices are smaller or something like that. So you can apply some properties directly to this container as well. For example, maybe for some reason you want to give some margins or paddings to this, that will apply to the container. So container will shrink, not inside once. So let's just say padding and uh, Padding, let's just say give uh, eight. Yeah, somehow eight is favorite number. So you notice here, now it shrinks. And just to uh, like uh, exaggerate the things, I'll just say 28. And you notice that this is how it is moving on. Now, let's just say, I'll go back. Now, here's the interesting thing. What if I go ahead and have one more of the green? Or let's just say one more red at the end. So I'll copy this and I'll paste it up here. Save that. And there we go. Now this guy is not here because that is my maximum length of the screen, 100, 100, 100, and it has covered it. it. I can see it barely there, but it is not making it up. So this is where I need to learn a little bit more because obviously there is, I can surely pack it up. I can reduce the size. If I go ahead and instead of saying 100, 100 of these uh, width of that, I can make it a, a percentage of that. Like, hey, you just take uh, probably like 20% uh, of this. I have to wrap this up. Come on, making a mess. Uh, I, I can go ahead and try this out. It, it will work. It will surely work. But um, that's not the point. You can play around with that. 
uh, I'll just go back onto this one. There we go. But the goal of saying to all of this to you is that, why are you not shrinking it back? Refreshing. Come on, refresh, please. All right, red with an extra D. Why is it? I, I, you are supposed to go out. You are supposed to go out. All right. I'll just check it out in a minute. But the whole idea is uh, I should be able to do a hard refresh. Let me just check that. And we'll just do a reload. There we go. This is better now. So uh, the point is I can just keep on adding the elements up here. I can just copy this. Flexbox might be able to save me yeah, a little bit. But this is not the end goal that I'm having. My goal is different. I want to keep this width as 100 and height as 100. Or maybe I want it to be 100 and 110 of all the cards width. I, I want to go for that. Who is stopping me from doing this? Why this property is not taking care? First and foremost, let me check that. I probably need to have some of these issues are not checking up. Let me just quickly check that. All right, so we are back. It was just a caching issue in case you are also facing the caching issue. Uh, just open up your Metro Builder and hit Shift and R. It's going to hit a hard reload and it will build up nicely. So the way how I want it to be or how it should be is exactly now. Okay, coming back onto the point. The goal of this video is now we have learned a lot about this, but the problem is there could be more of these elements. I now want to learn how I can move it from off the screen as well and how can I achieve a look which you have seen in the Netflix and all of that. So this video has already given you a lot of in-depth. In case you have achieved something from this video, please, please, it means a lot when you hit that subscribe button, when you hit that uh, comment section, just say thanks. Uh, shout out to our sponsor Hashnode as well. Please write an article about in-depth guide of how the cards are there and how this flexbox manipulates the elements on the web. So don't just make these boxes, try to bring in maybe an images or try to play around with some emojis or maybe uh, just a text or something like that. That would be really, really helpful for me. So that is all. I hope you have enjoyed this. Let's move on to the next video and talk about another type of card element and we'll catch up in the next video.